Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get a line of credit with Google Ads. This is John from Stub Group. We are a top premier Google partner digital advertising agency, and we help businesses dominate Google Ads and make money online. So you are probably watching this video if you are interested in getting a line of credit, also called monthly invoicing with Google Ads. And there's a couple of different reasons why you might wanna get a line of credit with Google. So for example, if you're an agency and you are paying ad spend on behalf of your clients to Google, uh, which we do here at Stub Group for some of our clients, you might wanna get a line of credit, set up monthly invoicing with Google. If you're a, a large business that's just spending a lot of money with Google and you want net 30 terms with them, that's another reason. Or if you're an advertiser and you have multiple Google Ads accounts, maybe you are a serial entrepreneur and you have multiple different websites that you're advertising and different Google Ads accounts for those websites, it's often safer from a Google compliance perspective to go ahead and have monthly invoicing set up rather than having, for example, the same credit card across multiple ad accounts because you'll often get flagged by Google for suspicious payments even if you're paying everything on time and there's no problems on your end and it can become a nightmare. So those are, I'd say, the most common reasons why people will use monthly invoicing slash credit line with Google and I'm gonna tell you how to apply for it. So first of all, what are you going to need? So there's a couple pieces of eligibility requirements that Google um, requires. So you have to have an active Google Ads account in good standing for a minimum of one year. And that includes a good payment history. Now you may ask, does good standing, like what happens if maybe my account was suspended at some time during the past year, and then we got it unsuspended? Does that count still as good standing or not? And the short answer is, uh, it depends how Google approaches it, but I'd still go ahead and request the line of credit and you'll probably be okay, as long as your account is not suspended currently. If you had a suspended Google Ads account right now, or if you've not paid Google on time, within the past year, then that's gonna be a problem. Um, you also need to have spent a minimum of $5,000 per month for any three of the last 12 months. Uh, that can vary by country. I'm gonna assume that you're in the US. Uh, that's 3,000 USD if you're in the US. And then you also, as a business, as the business that's applying for the line of credit, you need to have been registered for at least one year. So if you're a brand new business, you just registered within the last year, you're gonna to have to wait a bit longer before Google sees enough track record to go ahead and give you a line of credit. So those are the three things that Google announces are required. Now, one other thing that you'll need logistically is something called a Google Ads Manager account. Uh, these used to be called MCCs back in the day. Now they're called Google Ads Manager accounts. And think of it as a kind of a parent account that nestles over, over top of the actual child accounts where you manage campaigns and ads and keywords and all that good stuff. So you're going to need a Google Ads Manager account. If you don't already have one, you wanna go ahead and create one before you start this application process for a credit line with Google. And the way that you can do that, honestly, just Google, like create Google Ads Manager account. You'll see the option from Google, follow the steps. You will need to do it via an email address that is not yet associated with a Google Ads account. Because if you've already created a Google Ads account from that email address, Google's not gonna let you change that to become a Google Ads Manager account. So if you need to create a fresh email address for the purposes of the manager account, go ahead and do that and then go through those steps and get your manager account created. All right, so once you have your manager account and if you're meeting this other eligibility requirements, you're, you can go ahead and fill out a form with Google to apply for the monthly credit line. And to do that, uh, you're gonna wanna go to this page um, that you'll see my screen here in the Google Ads help area. It's called apply for monthly invoicing. Go there um, and then go to this little fine print area here, contact us and click on contact us. And that will bring you to this page here. Now you'll see a couple of different options here and you wanna select this first one, apply for monthly invoicing, which will take you into this interface here. So here, what you do is you'd put your Google Ads login email. You use the one that's associated with both the, the Google Ads manager account and the client account. So ideally what you're gonna do is you're going to create the manager account, make sure you have a manager account. You're going to make sure that the child account um, is accessed, accessible under the manager account and then use the email address for the manager account. Also, one other fun little little side note that will save you a step, because otherwise Google's gonna come back and tell you to do this, is you wanna make sure that your Google Ads manager account is listed as the owner for the child account. 
The way that you do that is by going to the access and security section within the Google Ads manager account. I should say within the child account. And you'll see when you go to the managers tab that shows the manager account that's linked to the child account, you'll see a little column there called owner and it could either say yes or no. If it says no, change it to yes. If it says yes, you're great. Once it says yes, you've taken care of that step. All right, next up. Uh, so going through the form, put your, your Google Ads login email address there, and then say that your company has been registered as a business for at least, at least one year, because if it hasn't, then you shouldn't go through this process to begin with. Then upload your business res registration documents. And um, Google gives some information here about what you can and can't upload. They're looking for something like articles of incorporation, uh, something, you know, LLC filing documents, something along those lines. Then uh, under name, this is where you can put your, your name or the, the contact name that you want to use associated with the account. Put your contact email address there. Use again, this, I, I would recommend here use the same one as you used up here. And then if you want to CC other email addresses, let's say, let's say you're working with Stub Group or your agency and you want to keep us in the loop as you apply for this, um, you would email, you would CC our email addresses, for example. And then your registered legal company name. So this is going to need to match what your name is listed as in the documentation that you uploaded up here. And then uh, your registered corporate address. Now this trips people up sometimes because often the address you use now as your primary business address is different than the address you used back in the day when you incorporated or when you filed as an LLC. And so Google recognizes that and they give an option here. If the addresses no longer match each other, you can upload a document, a letter on company letterhead. It states that, et cetera, et cetera. You can read the instructions right here. And also they don't accept PO box or mailing addresses or addresses that belong to a company branch or agent, et cetera, et cetera. So read, read that fine print there because it's important. Then you'll select the country that you're registered in as business, your state region, your postal code, your city. And again, these things are probably gonna match what you put up here. Generally, I would say use the same information in both places, same address in both places. Neighborhood slash district is not required. Uh, street address is required. Company representative name is required. Again, I would use the same one as you put earlier on right here in the uh, form. If you have VAT or tax ID, you can enter that there. It's not required. Um, if you have it, it's good to, good to enter. And then uh, billing contact name. If you have, let's say maybe a different billing contact, for whatever reason, then the name that you're submitting things under, you could use different names. Generally, it's gonna be simpler and straightforward to use the same name across the board. And then um, you have the option to use another different billing contact email address. Again, I would generally say use the same one as you used earlier in the form. Then add your contact phone number. If you have a DUNS number, go ahead and add it. Um, if you don't have one, that's fine. It's not a required field. It could just speed things up a little bit if you add one. And then here, you're going to essentially say, what is what are you requesting the credit line amount to be? The way you wanna think about this is definitely set it higher than what you're planning to spend on a monthly basis because you don't wanna have a situation where you are increasing spend um, and you're not able to spend as much as you want to because you're hitting your credit line. Um, but also, you know, keep it realistic. If you've been spending $5,000 per month for the last year in your account and you tell Google, I want a $100,000 line of credit per month, they're probably not going to give you $100,000 because it's not, you know, doesn't line up with what you've been spending. So, you know, shoot for something that's a little bit higher than what you need, but still on par with what you've been spending recently in the Google Ads account. Then you need to select your Google Ads customer ID. Here, you're not going to use your Google Ads manager account ID. You're gonna use a specific account ID for a child account, for an account that's, that's been running and been paying Google, been, been, you know, been, been manufacturing ad spend. And you should see it when you click on this dropdown, you should see it come up as an option, as long as you're logged in through, the, through an email address that has access to it, which again, step number one, we said we wanna make sure that you use an email address that has access to the child account kind of through that manager account. So you should see that account come up as an option in this dropdown. Then here, you're gonna put your manager account ID, child account ID, where the ad spend is actually happening right now, manager account ID that is on top of the child account. And then you can tell Google whether you want this change to happen as soon as possible or on a specific date. You could add additional details. I recommend not because generally the more details you throw at Google in a free form fashion, the more confused they get. So I would just leave this blank if I were you. You will need to certify that you are affiliated with the company, et cetera, et cetera. You have the option to submit another attachment. Generally, you're not gonna need to use this and it's not required. And then you have the option, how would you like a Google expert to respond? 
respond. I recommend um, email me because I like to keep these things in writing with Google to make sure I have track record of everything. And then another optional field here, summary of the issue. Again, I wouldn't add more information here because it could confuse the um, confu confuse Google further. Cool, so you've done this. You know, Go back, double check everything, make sure it's all correct and accurate. And then you can go ahead and click submit. So what will happen next, you'll, you'll see a, essentially a thank you page here saying, hey, thanks for submitting. And then you may or may not immediately get an email from Google. I've seen kind of both ways. Sometimes they'll send you a confirmation email saying they got, they got the submission. Sometimes they won't. And then generally within the next couple of days, you'll get an email from Google with next steps. I've seen them send different types of next step emails. Sometimes they'll ask for you to reiterate a lot of the information you already shared here, and in which case, go ahead and do it, send it to them again. Sometimes they'll ask for clarifying questions, sometimes they'll ask for more documentation, et cetera. But they'll basically walk you through the process and then either say, yes, you have a credit line, or no, you don't have a credit line. If they give you a credit line, what's gonna happen is the payments profile in your Google Ads account is going to change. And the payment method you've been using, let's say credit card or bank account, uh, PayPal, et cetera, that's gonna go away. And instead, Google's going to send you an invoice each month for the ad spend of the previous month. And you have generally net 30 days. So if you get an invoice for, let's say December, you're gonna get that um, early in January and you'll have until the end of January to pay Google. Obviously be sure to pay Google before the end of January or else you're gonna have problems. And um, the way you pay them is generally by wiring the funds to Google. So you're not gonna be using your credit card to pay Google anymore. You're gonna be wiring funds from your account to Google to pay for the ad spend. And that is pretty much it. The other question people might ask is, once I have a credit line with Google, can I associate that with multiple Google Ads accounts? And the answer is yes. That's almost what it's built for in many ways. So 100%, you can, add, you can have multiple ad accounts that are on the same credit line with Google. Again, you might often do this if you're an agency managing multiple accounts, if you're a company that owns multiple accounts, websites, for whatever reason, you're using multiple ad accounts. And so it's, it's very common to have multiple ad accounts using the same credit line with Google. If you have any questions, if you have any trouble, if you want any help going through this process, leave a comment or go to subgroup.com for more information. And if you found this information helpful, tap that subscribe button to get more in your feed. Until next time, John signing off.